It's time for another Auto Talk Driving Review. I am Christian Moe. This week we are in the 2015 Ram Promaster City. The 2015 Ram Promaster City is a compact van with a visual design that is funky, interesting, and decidedly un-American. The big bug-like headlights and strange profile come from the car's roots as a European van sold under the Fiat badge. To bring it to the States, a little more had to be done than a bumper swap. With sliding doors down both sides and a split barn door in the back, this machine may not be pretty, but it is practical. Alright, so let's just jump right into the thick of it. So, I have apparently become the man with the van when it comes to car reviews. So, you guys may have just seen the Mercedes Sprinter passenger van review I just did. Um, if you look across the internet, you will also find my face driving in a Nissan NV200 van. This Promaster City is sort of a split between those two things. The Mercedes-Benz was humongously giant and had room for 11 people, and it was just big and crazy. It was like a full-size van. The NV200 is a compact van, and the one they brought me was the cargo edition, so it had two seats, some plastic on the dash, and that was about it. I had just big metal backsides to store stuff. This is the Wagon SLT Promaster City, which means it's a mix between two of those. So Promaster City means it's the smaller of the Promaster vans. It is based on the Fiat Doblo, so this is technically a Fiat and not a Ram, but there's a Ram grill on it because that's how it works when you have giant corporations like that. But instead of a whole bunch of seats for a whole bunch of people like in the Mercedes, or a whole bunch of metal for a whole bunch of stuff like the Nissan, this is a mixture. I've got a single row of seats back there that will hold three people, making this five people total. And then behind that is a big like four foot by four foot square spot, five foot by five foot, something like that, that you can put stuff. So it's a mixture. It's a van that you can put people in, but it's also a van you can put stuff in which means you have a ton of space in the rear. So if this holiday season you're trying to give away, I don't know, five or six bags of clothes from the local charities, you just load it up in the back and go. So the 2015 Promaster City van is not a passenger van or a cargo van. It's, it's like a double van. Van. Kind of van. Yeah. Anyways, so underneath the hood... We have a 2.4 liter Tiger Shark engine, which is a great name for an engine, but it's just a four cylinder and it makes 178 horsepower and 174 pound feet of torque, which is not a lot, but compared to other vans in this small segment, it's pretty good. Uh, Nissan gives you a lot less power out of theirs. Made of that engine is a class exclusive nine-speed automatic transmission. This is the same nine-speed that Fiat Chrysler is putting in basically everything they produce, and it's a pretty good transmission overall. Shifts are smooth, shifts are fairly quick. Uh, you do run into the issue, though, of sometimes it's just too many gears. If you need to pass somebody on the highway, you give it a boot full of throttle, and you have to wait for it to shuffle through like eight of those nine gears before you'll start moving. So aside from that one issue, the transmission's pretty good. Um, otherwise, this is just a big front-wheel drive van. So, cargo space in the back, like we talked about. The actual total dimensions back there is 60.4 inches wide. So, it's about 5 feet wide. And then it's 87 inches long. So, it's really close to 8 feet long. But not quite 8 foot long. So, if you were a builder and wanted to throw some slabs of 4 by 8 back there, you are out of luck. But, thankfully, you can fit things that are four feet wide. Uh, Ram has made sure that the space between the rear wheel wells, which is the tightest spot in the cargo area, is 48.4 inches. So you can set a 4x4 four four slab of plywood back there just fine. You'll have just a little bit of wiggle room on either side of those wheel wells so you can take it in and out. Now, that engine itself is good for 21 miles to the gallon in the city. 29 miles to the gallon on the highway, which is a class leading number, and then 24 combined. Um, I've been doing mostly highway driving and poodling around, but I have done a few things like today's charity run. 
where I have had to do some city driving. Uh, but my overall average has been about 25. So a little bit better than what the number says. But again, that's with mostly highway driving. So I'd like to see how you guys do. I'm going to say it's probably going to air a little bit closer to the under 24 side, but not by much. For the most part, you're going to get what it says on the box. Now, as for being in this thing and using it, well, it's kind of nice, actually. So the engine is not that powerful, but it does feel kind of peppy. Um, of course, you can rev it out a bit. It'll rev all the way up to 6,400 RPMs. So if you really want to, you can rev the snot out of it and it'll move. Um, I've not done any sort of zero to 60 performance test because, well, that's silly and pointless. Um, it will do 60 eventually, but it's not fast enough for me to bother measuring. So, but yeah, living inside of this thing, it's, I mean, it's all right. The seats are great. Um, they were a bit stiff at first and I had a hard time kind of getting comfortable, but there's a lot of lumbar support and there's a fair bit of lateral support, uh, both up in the waist and down in the thighs. And I just sort of had to get the seat situated to a position that was comfy. Once I did, it's been great. No problems. Um, steering wheel, it's good. Door panels, nice. And there's padding and I got an armrest, stuff like that's nice. Storage space. Tons of storage. I have a gigantic cubby up here that will hold like five hoodies if you want to stuff them up there. We had four up there the other day, so no problem. I've got a little cubby up front with the pen tray, and then I have another teeny tiny cubby in front of my shifter, then I have another little cubby in front of my cup holder, then there are two 12 volt jacks, and then another cup holder, which by the way, this cup holder underneath the armrest, what the hell were you guys thinking? That's a terrible idea. Even this main front cup holder is really low and sort of hard to get to. Cup holders are terrible, but they're there. Then I've got a cubby up above the glove box, and then I've got a pretty decent sized glove box, and then there are big door pockets with bottle holders on both sides. I've got another little cubby up on that side. Like there's just little storage spaces everywhere, which is awesome because in a thing that will do work, you want spaces to sort of hold things to make work easier. Now, there are some problems, like all this dash up here is just plastic, but this thing is cheap. At least they were nice enough that inside this big center cubby, there's a nice rubber mat, so if you set something up there like your phone, it's less likely to vibrate against the plastic and drive you insane. But like I said, there are some nice padded spots. The steering wheel is covered in this like fake leather stuff that doesn't feel too awful, actually. And like I said, I've got padded here on the armrest, and I have padding here on this armrest. Of course, this armrest will go up or down so you can get it out of the way if you want it. The seats are just cloth, but I mean, it sort of works. There hasn't actually been a lot of squeaks or rattles. Um, I've been really surprised with that. Um, wind noise is actually fairly subdued. Tire roar is your biggest NVH thing on the highway. But otherwise, like this is just a typical cheaper car. It's actually pretty good. Now, pricing wise, this thing is $29,255. or sorry, $29,255. So what you get for that money is the big van with seating for five. I've got seven airbags. I have a really awful stereo with just like four or five speakers, but I do have navigation. So that's a nice inclusion. I also have Bluetooth. So while there is no satellite radio here, I can Bluetooth my phone in, stream from Spotify, Pandora, whatever you want to do. So that sort of makes up for that. Like I said, I do have navigation. So if you wanted to use this as an actual work machine, you could. Um, as for using it as a work machine, those rear seats do fold. Um, instead of folding flat, they fold and tumble forward to make the back area longer. So that's nice. So you get the really deep load floor as far as the height goes, but it comes almost all the way up to the front seats. So I do dig that. Comfort in the rear seats is just okay. Um, there are seat belts and positions for three people, but don't put three, three people back there. Um, really, you can fit two people comfortably and they'll be all right back there. Um, cup holders and stuff is kind of an issue back there, but meh. They do at least have the nice big door pockets with bottle holders, so that works. 
Uh, other equipment, I'm missing some things that people like. Like, there is no sunroof here, but again, this is basically a cargo van, so I wasn't upset about that. Uh, the rear doors are a barn door, but they're a big door and a little door. So you have the main door, which is a really wide door, opens up, and then you have a smaller door if you need more access to the rear. Both of those doors, of course, will hit a special latch on the inside if you want to, and they will swing 270 degrees out to touch the sides of the van, so you have a completely full open loading area. Being in this thing for a week has been pretty cool, actually. Um, I kind of like being the man with the van. Vans like this are obnoxiously, insanely useful. Like, hey, I need to go pick up some wood from the hardware store. You could get just as much inside of this, and in fact, actually, you can get more wood inside of this easier than you can in the Frontier I had just a few days ago. Like, you just can. The rear cargo area of this is bigger than the bed of that car, plus it's covered and it's like four and a half feet tall, so you can really stack stuff up in, in here. Of course, when you have projects like today, I'm delivering a bunch of clothing items to one of the local rescue shelters. Like, throw all that stuff in here. It fits easier than it does in the trunk of a car, and then you don't have to worry about if it's raining or what the weather's like if you want to throw it in the back of the truck. So super, super useful. Plus again, with this one, you can fit five people and all their stuff. I talk a lot about a scuba mobile. I like to scuba dive. This is a hell of a scuba mobile because you don't even have to like rearrange your seats. Like I brought that up in the review for the Mercedes, but you have to start pulling out seats to make that thing practical. This doesn't have back seats. It just has the one seat. So you and four friends and then enough space to store Let's see, at least 15 or 20 tanks, plus all of the gear you guys would need to go diving, plus enough camping gear for two weeks. Like, you can fit all that stuff in that back hatch area. And there are big metal D-rings already installed in the floor, so you can just latch things up, tie them all down, don't have to worry about anything sliding around. Like, it's really great. Of course, there are some issues. While the 29 mile per gallon on the highway is segment exclusive, in today's day and age, 29 miles per gallon just is not a lot. I mean, Chevy now has a Colorado that'll do that much, right? Like, I can now buy a truck that'll do 29 miles per gallon. I'm kind of getting to the point where I want to see better fuel economy numbers out of machines like this. This is a van, it is a cargo van, but it's not that big, and my engine is not that big. It's 2.4 liter, so kind of want to see some better fuel economy performance out of that. Said otherwise, the engine's good, transmission's good, cabin cubbies are great. I wish the cup holders were better because these cup holders suck. But aside from the crappy placement of the cup holders, there's not a lot to complain about inside this cabin. I don't know if I'd ever actually buy one, but I mean, 29,000 for a practical van is pretty good. In my brain, I think anyone who's looking at something like, like this to move people and stuff would still probably be better suited by a minivan. Uh, big minivans these days are a lot more comfortable, a lot more refined, and thanks to all the swappable, changeable seating spaces, you can really organize it and set it up the way you want for exactly what you need. But minivans are getting expensive now. So for the cost, this thing is pretty good. Um, it would be nice if it had satellite radio because I love the hell out of satellite radio. But yeah, that's like one of my only real complaints. Cup holders, no satellite radio. Otherwise, it's a solid machine that it's hard to pick a fault at. Anyways, again, I'm Christian Moe. I want to thank you guys for joining me on this run into town today. And I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did like this video, go ahead and do the little thumbs up thing. If you didn't like the video, go ahead and do the little thumbs down thing. But please leave a comment tell us what you liked and what you didn't. Because that helps us know how to make them better for you. I have heard that you guys want more external shots of the video, or more external shots of the car in the video. I'm working on it. Trying to find a second shooter has been more difficult than I had first anticipated. But I'm trying to get someone who will be a follow car for me so we can do some cool exterior shots of this thing while I'm driving around. Otherwise, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you want to. If you want to see more cool content like this, you can go to autotalk.com, see all of our news, reviews. We have dozens of high resolution photos and wallpapers of every car we cover. So go ahead and check all those out. If you want a new wallpaper of a sweet Lamborghini for your phone or for your uh, computer, or hell, even if you just want a sweet 
desktop picture of this minivan. You can you can do that too because they're all up there. So go check it out. Anyways, like I said, I am Christian Mo. This has been a review for AutoTalk.com. I appreciate you guys coming and hanging out with me. And until the next video, please get out there, drive, have fun, but please stay safe. I'll see you next time.